This is Nunchuck, take one. Uh, what's that? No. No, I'm not doing it. I said I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do that gag where I act like I'm talking to someone off screen. It's a cliche. It's a tired old trope and I won't do it. It doesn't even make any sense. If someone were really interrupting me from off screen, there's no reason it would be in the video. I would just edit it out. Look, I've, I've written a really great bit for Nunchuck. It's probably the funniest bit I've ever done for this show. And you're interrupting me. Can I start now? Can I start now? Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Action on three. One, two, three. Action! Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. This is the show where we review every vintage G.I. Joe toy from 1982 to 1994. Ninja Force. What is it? It's a force of ninjas. That's what you call a group of ninjas, like a school of fish or a murder of crows. G.I. Joe had a sub-team called Ninja Force in 1992 and 1993. This was likely due to the popularity of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. In the 90s, G.I. Joe was searching for trends to maintain its relevance. Ninja Force had its problems. Many of the figures were brightly colored, which you wouldn't want for a ninja. They had action feature gimmicks, which limited articulation and took away the back screw so they couldn't have backpacks. They weren't all bad though, and we're going to talk about one of the better ones today. After Ninja Force, there was another subset called Shadow Ninjas. That set did away with any of the positive attributes of Ninja Force. The Shadow Ninjas consisted entirely of reused figures and accessories. And as if one gimmick wasn't enough, they also had a color change gimmick. Nunchuck was in both Ninja Force and the Shadow Ninjas, and we are going to look at both of those figures today. HCC. 788 presents Nunchuck. This is Nunchuck version 1, the Nunchaku Ninja from G.I. Joe's Ninja Force, and Nunchuck version 2 from the Shadow Ninjas. Version 1 was introduced in 1992 and was available in 1992 only. It was discontinued for 1993. Version 2 was introduced in 1994 and was available in 1994 only. The vintage G.I. Joe toy line ended in 1994. There were only the two versions of Nunchuck in the vintage era, there were a few post-vintage versions. Nunchuck was in the Ninja Force subset. Ninja Force was a team of ninjas in G.I. Joe introduced in 1992, led by Storm Shadow. The third version of Storm Shadow was part of that Ninja Force set. All Ninja Force figures had action feature gimmicks. Like with many of these subsets, the bad guys were released under the same name and logo. In 1992, Ninja Force had had Slice and Dice as the bad guys. Ninja Force was continued in 1993 with a new series of G.I. Joe ninjas and bad guys. There were some Ninja Force vehicles in 1993, the Ninja Lightning Motorcycle, the Battle Axe, and the Pile Driver. 1993 was the end of Ninja Force, but some of the figures were reincarnated in 1994's Shadow Ninjas. Nunchuck was one of them. The Shadow Ninjas were recast Ninja Force figures in temperature-sensitive plastic, a gimmick called Inviso Power. I will demonstrate how this works later. The name Nunchuck is a modified pronunciation of Nunchaku, which is an Okinawan flail weapon. The Nunchuck was popularized by Bruce Lee in the movie Fist of Fury. It was also the weapon of choice for my favorite Ninja Turtle, Michelangelo. Nunchuck, of course, does include Nunchucks. It would be pretty silly to have Nunchuck without Nunchuck right? Well, there is a problem with that. We'll get to it. I have the full card back for Nunchuck, so we can take a look at how this figure was marketed back in 1992. It has a hot pink background, which was standard for Ninja Force figures. It has the G.I. Joe logo, the Ninja Force logo. This figure was sold at Walmart for $2.83. That's not bad. The name is Nunchuck. He is number three in the series. It has this blurb down here describing his real ninja action 
Russian Samurai Smash. And there's a diagram behind where the figure would have been showing you how it works. A lot of the artwork is covered up with this promotional sticker. Turning our attention to the back of the card, we have the flag point, a single flag point in the 90s style. We have the cross cell. We have the general release figures. Then we have this partition for Ninja Force. We even have a description of Ninja Force here. It says these swift and silent commandos are the true elite forces for G.I. Joe and Cobra. Each ninja warrior is fully capable of neutralizing an adversary in milliseconds. Yes, milliseconds. Well, a, a lot of milliseconds. It doesn't say how many milliseconds with his spring action martial arts moves and lethal weapons. Nunchuck includes two lethal weapons and he has nicknamed them Riggs and Murtaugh. Watch the new TV adventures of G.I. Joe. We have the file card in the 90s style and we will read this later. The file card has a numbered list of the accessories and features and I will refer to this when describing the figure. I do not have the full card back for version 2 but all of the Shadow Ninja's figures had this same basic card back design with the same background artwork showing Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes even if it was not Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes on the card. So even though I don't have Nunchuck version 2's card back it would have looked very similar to this. Let's take a look at Nunchuck's accessories starting with version 1 and let's look at Nunchuck's Nunchucks. This is the weapon that gives the character his name so this makes perfect sense for this figure. It is in black plastic. It's got the chain that goes between the two sticks so you know it's pretty basic but that is his weapon of choice. The file card calls this Banzai Oak Nunchaku with non-breakable chain. Banzai as it is spelled here is a Japanese battle cry. What does that have to do with oak wood? Maybe they mean bonsai, but that still wouldn't make sense. Regardless of what it's made of, this is the weapon that gives Nunchuck his name, so it's pretty important that he include this. Nunchuck's second weapon is his sword. This sword with an odd curved-shaped blade. It is in black plastic. The final card calls this a double-edged samurai warrior sword. This is not a traditional shape for a samurai sword. Nunchuck's final accessory is his figure stand. It is a standard figure stand in black plastic. This was a helpful innovation of the 90s since 80s figures did not include figure stands. That's all for accessories, but that's all he needs. Nunchuck can hold all his weapons at the same time, which I prefer. Now let's look at version 2's accessories. The Shadow Ninja's version did not include the same accessories as version 1, and as you can see, it includes a lot more than two weapons. Version 2's accessories were attached to a plastic tree, the purchaser would have to cut the accessories off the plastic frame. They were all in this pink translucent plastic. They were all also reissued from earlier action figures. I am missing an accessory. There should be two of these little knives and I only have one. Since the only piece missing is just a copy of a piece I already have, I consider this to be complete enough to review. There is absolutely nothing new with these accessories. The accessory tree issued with this figure was a reissue of the accessories tree from Zartan version 3, the Ninja Force version from 1993, just in a different color plastic. So the accessories for Nunchuck version 2 are the same as with this Zartan figure. Let's take a look at those accessories and let's start with this compound bow. This is quite a substantial bow weapon. It is in pink translucent plastic. This bow was originally released in black plastic with Storm Shadow version 2 from 1988. It was issued in orange plastic in 1993 for Zartan version 2, and it was issued in blue plastic for Night Creeper version 2 from 1993. The next accessory is this sickle. It was cast in that pink translucent plastic. This accessory was originally issued with 1992 Ninja 
Ninja Force Dojo. It was originally meant to be connected with a separate handle piece with a black string. This reissue does not include the black string or the separate piece, but it still has the loop for the black string. This accessory was also issued in orange plastic for Zartan version 2. The next accessory is the sword. Again, it's issued in that pink translucent plastic. A pretty standard looking sword, nothing too exciting here. This sword was issued in blue plastic for 1993 Night Force Night Creeper version 2. And of course, in orange plastic for Zartan version 2. The next accessory is this large knife. It is once again in that pink translucent plastic. It's sometimes referred to as a machete. This was originally issued with 1998 spearhead in gray plastic. This is an odd looking weapon. It doesn't look much like a machete. It looks more like a Roman sword. This knife, or whatever you want to call it, was issued in blue plastic for 1993 Night Creeper version 2, and of course in orange plastic for Ninja Force Zartan. The next accessory is the small knife. I only have one. There should be two of them. I am missing one. Like with all the other accessories, it is in that pink translucent plastic, and this is a reissue from Zartan version 2 from 1993. With Zartan, he had these two handy holsters on the leg for both of the knives. Of course, not so with Nunchuck. Lastly, we have the figure stand. It is a pink translucent issue of a standard figure stand. Again, a 90s innovation. And that's it for accessories. Nunchuck version 2 comes with a lot of accessories. Too many, in fact. But what is missing here? Nunchuck does not come with nunchucks. Why not? By 1993, G.I. Joe was packaging figures with accessories trees, with all reissued accessories. They weren't going to give him the same accessories as version 1. Furthermore, they weren't going to create a new accessories tree for this figure. They were only going to reuse one they had used before. But there was an accessories tree that included nunchucks. Ninja Force Snake Eyes version 5 from 1990. 93 included nunchucks. So why wasn't this one used instead of the one from Zartan? So there was an accessories tree with nunchucks in 1993, but maybe that particular accessories tree was not available in 1994 for the Shadow Ninjas. Except it was because they used it for Shadow Ninja's Snake Eyes. There it is right there. It was available. They could have used it, but they didn't. This is why I struggle to appreciate 90s figures. I know they have a lot of fans and I try to give them a fair shake, but there is a low effort quality to them that I just can't accept. Someone at Hasbro looked at this and thought it was fine and didn't care if it made any sense at all. Is that good enough? Is that the kind of quality that should be accepted? acceptable for a toy line under the banner of G.I. Joe. I don't think so. I think the kids in 1994 deserved better. Let's take a look at Nunchuck's articulation. Both version 1 and version 2 had the same articulation, so let's just take a look at one of them. He did not have the articulation that was standard for G.I. Joe figures by 1993 because as a Ninja Force figure, he had an action feature gimmick. He could turn his head from left to right. He could not look up and down. He did not have the ball-jointed neck that was standard for G.I. Joe figures starting in 1985. His left arm arm was pretty standard. He lift his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow so he could bend his arm at the elbow about 90 degrees and a swivel at the bicep so he could swivel his arm all the way around. The right arm though had the spring loaded action feature. He could still lift his arm at the shoulder and bend at the elbow about 90 degrees and swivel at the bicep but he had a spring in the shoulder so if you push the arm forward it would spring back. And that is it. That is the Samurai Smash action feature. Because of the internal mechanics of that action feature, this figure could not move at the waist. He had no waist articulation. A standard G.I. Joe figure could move at the belt cut. This guy cannot. He could move his legs apart about so far. He could bend his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's look at the sculpt design and color of Nunchuck. And I have to point out another Ninja Force figure, Bushido from 1993, used exactly 
exactly the same body as Nunchuck, but in different colors. I think Nunchuck wore it better. Looking at version 1 first, this is a camouflage ninja figure. That's very impressive. Camouflage was becoming less common by 1992. It's a refreshing change from the bright colors of other Ninja Force figures. On his head, he has a black balaclava mask with the eyes uncovered. He also has a black soft goods flap on the back. The final card calls this ninja headgear with Havelock covering, but Havelock is misspelled. On his chest, he has a karate gi style shirt in green plastic with black tiger stripe camouflage. He has a black undershirt. He has black straps that connect at the belt in the front and go over both shoulders and connect to the belt in the back. On both straps at the top, he has these circular objects. The file card calls these cluster blast bombs. In the artwork, they look more like grenades. He has a pouch on the right strap. The file card calls this a 0.9 millimeter ammo pouch. Do they mean 9mm? Because 0.9mm would be very tiny. On the left side strap, he has a knife. The file card calls this a clean-cut, chest-mounted combat knife. This is a good time to point out this figure does not have a back hole for a back screw. That's because of the internal mechanism for the spring-loaded feature. It also means he cannot carry a backpack, and you can't take the screw out and replace the O-ring like you could on a standard figure. His arms feature long green sleeves with a black camouflage pattern. He has black forearm wrappings and black gloves. He has black pouches on each upper arm with black straps that go around each arm. The file card calls these pouches throwing stars shoulder pouches. His waist piece is in green plastic with black tiger stripe camouflage. He has a black belt that's pretty plain, not a lot of detail on that belt. He has a black strap on the right side of the belt that goes down to his pistol holster on the right leg. His legs are green with black tiger stripe camouflage, keeping with the overall theme of the figure. The left leg is plain, but the right leg has a black pistol holster. The file card calls this a 09 millimeter sidearm and blast-proof holster. Maybe they do mean 09 millimeter literally. It's the size of the bullet that would fit in the tiny action figure gun. We finish up the lower legs with some black leg wrappings and black boots. This is a surprisingly practical uniform. Ninja Force is known to be zany with impractical bright colors. Nunchuck is well camouflaged with realistic equipment that would actually be useful in combat. He even has a sidearm. The sculpt and design of version 2 is the same as version 1, but it is cast in a temperature-sensitive plastic. Inviso power is supposed to mimic the ninja's ability to turn invisible. By placing the figure in warm water, the plastic would turn white. Placing the figure in cold water will turn it back to the original pink color. Let's demonstrate how this works. I have a bowl of warm water and a bowl of cold water here. I'm going to place Nunchuck in the warm water first, and we should see a color change on the plastic. Warm water first. Let's just place him in there. Uh, make sure he's dunked really well for a few seconds. Uh, that is very warm water indeed, so this should do the trick. And I pull him out, and he has turned all white. Well, almost all white. This is the Inviso power, but I hope I'm not making a controversial statement when I say this is not invisible. Even if it was invisible, the black bits, including the soft goods flap on the back, they're still black. Now let's place him in the cold water, and he should turn back to his original color. So that's icy cold water, very cold water. And uh, let's just dip him in there and pull him out. And yeah, there we go. He is pink again. This figure takes one of the best things about Nunchuck, his color, and replaces it with a gimmick. The first figure already had an action feature gimmick, so this one has a double gimmick. Let's take a look at the file card, starting with version 1. This file card does have a hot pink background. Yuck. It has some artwork of Nunchuck and a closer portrait. His codename is Nunchuck. He is the Nunchaku Ninja. His file name is Ralph Baducci. Missed opportunity not naming him Charles. His primary military specialty is self-defense instructor at the local YMCA. His secondary military specialty is ordnance. His birthplace is Brooklyn, New York. So this is your mysterious ninja, Ralph Baducci from Brooklyn. 
Wasn't this guy on Welcome Back, Cotter? His grade is E5 for some reason, even though his background does not indicate any military service before joining G.I. Joe. There's a one-line quote here, presumably from Ralph. It says, you take the two on the left, I'll deal with the other 17. This paragraph says, Nunchuck studied mystic fighting forms at the school of a mysterious blind master in Denver, because Denver is where you go to study mystic fighting forms. Driven by the need to perfect his form, Nunchuck moved to San Francisco and enrolled in a martial arts school where his distinctive style caught the eye of the Sensei Storm Shadow. And Sensei has an asterisk before the word, that should be after, and the footnote says teacher, so I, I think we all know what Sensei means. There, Storm Shadow personally supervised his instructions, and when Nunchuck was ready, Storm Shadow made him a G.I. Joe Ninja Force fighter. Nunchuck specializes in Ninchaku attack styles, utilizing the terrifying form known as the Samurai Smash. Smash. He enjoys taking on Cobra while commanding the G.I. Joe Battle Wagon. Here is Nunchuck in his favorite vehicle, the Battle Wagon. He just likes to hang out the side and swing his nunchucks at people as they drive by. That makes perfect sense. Yes, it does. Shut up. Now let's take a look at the version 2 file card. By 1994, G.I. Joe file cards had been reduced to baseball card size, which is a shame. File cards are a great tradition in G.I. Joe, and it's kind of sad to see them reduced to this. It's almost as bad as not having a file card at all. We have a portrait of Nunchuck. This is recolored from the version 1 card. It says Nunchuck here and codename Nunchuck up here. The text on this card is mostly the same as version 1, just modified a little bit. This this is number 41 in the 1994 series. He is still the Nunchaku Ninja. File name Ralph Baducci, birthplace Brooklyn, grade E5, primary military specialty, self-defense instructor, secondary military specialty ordinance. He still has this quote, you take the two on the left, I'll take the other 17. This paragraph says, Nunchuck studied mystic fighting forms at a school run by a mysterious blind master in Denver. Driven by the need to perfect his form, Nunchuck moved to San Francisco, where his distinctive style caught the eye of his new sensei Storm Shadow who accepted him into Ninja Force. They still have the asterisk in the wrong place before the word sensei. They didn't fix that. It still refers to teacher. Now they fight Cobra together as Shadow Ninjas as if Cobra didn't have enough problems. As if I didn't have enough problems. Looking at how Nunchuck was used in G.I. Joe Media, he wasn't used very much. He appeared in only two episodes of the Deke animated series, and he had no lines. He had a total of 36 seconds of screen time in the entire series. He was more prominent in the comic book series published by Marvel Comics, where Ninja Force was featured more often. He first appeared in issue number 117, along with other members of Ninja Force. He was often drawn without his Havelock. Although he appeared numerous times in the comic book, he was mostly in the background. Looking at Nunchuck overall, this is one of my favorite Ninja Force figures. Surprisingly, Ninja Force has some figures I like. Although the set includes some weirdos, it also includes good versions of Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes. And Nunchuck. The camouflage is impressive. We would expect to see a ninja in black, but this is a good second option. He is dressed to sneak around undetected. It's unfortunate this was a ninja force figure because that means it had an action feature gimmick and limited articulation. This would have been a good standard issue figure. Not only does the figure look good, he is well equipped. He even has a sculpted on pistol. Ninjas tend to stick with traditional silent weapons, but there are times when a firearm is just more useful in combat. His accessories are minimal but appropriate. He comes with two weapons that he can use in ninja fighting. Both of them can be used with his action feature, and he can hold all of his weapons. There is very little to complain about on Nunchuck version 1. Version 2 is a different story. Gone is the green and black camouflage. Gone are the appropriate weapons. Gone are Nunchuck's Nunchucks. For me, the invention Viso power gimmick is not worth it. My play pattern did not include keeping a bowl of warm water around to dip a figure in. And by the way, He's not invisible. There is a laziness factor to these Shadow Ninjas figures that I find unpalatable. Of course, there are fans of these figures. There are fans of all figures. There's nothing wrong with that. If you are a fan of the Shadow Ninjas, I only wish you had gotten better figures with more effort and accessories that actually made sense.
That was my review of two versions of Nunchuck. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to the YouTube channel and share this video with your friends. That's what helps this channel grow. You can find me on social media on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. I could not continue doing these videos without the support of my friends on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, that's a great way to do it. You can even get your name in videos like the name you see scrolling on the screen right now. Thank you for watching and thank you for your patience as we ramp up to Cobra Convergence 6 coming in July. I will be back with you soon with another vintage G.I. Joe toy review and until then remember only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.